Welcome to Demo 1 Training. We're going to get right into it and check our settings. And at the very top here in the right-hand corner, as you see settings, you click on that, and you see three buttons, network, audio, and video. Um, and you want to check your network right away. So you, do, you just hit click Start Test. And you can see my numbers are really high. And the reason for that is that we have got six people right now that are using the Internet. Usually when I'm teaching, I'm the only person using the, using the Internet. So typically you want MS around 33. I, mine have been 33. You want any, anything below 80 is acceptable by them. But let's say you're having some issues. They might pop in at the very bottom right-hand corner. They might pop in and say, hey, you're lagging a lot. Can you send me your uh, send me a log of your, of your numbers? And what I do is usually I'm at 33 milliseconds, which is great. And I have 0% packet loss way down here at the bottom. You see 0%, four packets received, 0, 0. Okay. So that's typically what I want it to be at 0. And I want it to be 80 and below on the, over here on the right-hand side. And then you says send log, and it goes to them. I'm not going to send it now because I'm not doing anything with them. And I would send it, and it says sent. You want to check your audio. Um, you probably want to max this out. Well, I'm at 59. It probably... Maybe put it up a little bit higher. And then your speaker. That's going to tell you what you are using for speakers. I have my built-in, which is the Mac. I have, okay, this is just saying it's the default. So I have the default, which I'm using right now, which is this. Go back to my video. And I can see that I'm using the right camera. This is the FaceTime camera. If you do have a web camera, um, I don't use Manycam, but I've got it installed on my, on my, on my camera, on my uh, Mac. Um, you want to make sure that the camera is working and it's in the right setting. Okay, this is a this is a practice room, but it really is identical to the actual classroom that you'll be teaching in. So there's nothing really different about it. I think that's why it's cool that you'll be you have an opportunity at some point to if you do go forward, you'll be able to talk to whoever is going to interview you, as well as um, when you do trials, you'll be able to talk to children and it will look just like this. So there's nothing different about that, which is really great. When you first open up your page, you're going to see this this little box here. It kind of gives you a brief summary of what's to come. So it tells you what kind of class it is, what the level is, um, what the objectives are. And this one, obviously, because it's just a demo, it's not really telling me much. And then it tells me what country uh, the child is from and also the time, the morning. So we're 15. I'm 15 hours difference. They're 15 hours ahead of me. In New York City area, to East Coast will be 12 hours, and as you go across the country, it changes. So we just say, we click on the hello, and we come to this first screen, and this is how it's always going to be. It's always going to be set up like this. The only difference is two things, is the clock. The clock here says class is finished, but you will have, when you enter, and you should really focus on entering between five minutes and four minutes. If you cut it too close to three, you might lose your class, and that's not a good thing. So try to get there around five minutes. That's For new people, I just try to tell them just get in there at five minutes because it gives you, for one thing, you're just starting out. And you're going to have need an opportunity to, um, you know, get used to everything. So the purpose of this video is to get you used to everything. But when you are when you first start teaching, a lot of it's just trial by error. And, you, and I can't really tell you everything that's going to happen because every day is different. But if you have the basis, the basics of what you're supposed to do, you'll be fine. And so that's the, that's the purpose of this video. So let's talk about, first of all, this thing is right near my head. This is called a transparent box. As you, as you can see, there's like a very slight, maybe 10 or 20% screen um, opacity level. And this kind of moves, you can move this wherever you want within these boundaries. And what this, the purpose of this is when you're talking to a student. So let's say you walk, you come into the room, you say, hi, everybody. My name is Nick. What's your name? Or... Hi, everybody. My name is Nick. Nice to meet you. And they'll all say in unison, Hi, teacher. Nice to meet you. Or something. You know, they'll, re re they'll respond to you. Or you can do it on an individual basis. You can say, Hi, Kobe. My name is Nick. Nice to meet you. And they'll say, Nice to meet you. Or I'll say, How are you? And they'll say, I'm fine. How are you? This is, gives you an opportunity to talk to each individual child. Um, instead of using, you can either talk to them as a group like this, so all four of them are, are looking at me, and pretend that this is a holding box right now because there are no actual ch children in the class. So they're just looking at, this is what's considered the student is in, they can hear you, 
for the most part, we, we, we assume, we, we have to double check that in a second, and that they are in the, in the room with you and they have their microphone, but we don't know that for a fact until we, that's what the purpose of the introductory five minutes, you have five minutes, to, and your, your basic idea is to introduce yourself to them, say, how are you? And at the same time, you're kind of checking their levels. You're checking their microphone levels to make sure they can hear you, you can hear them. And you just do that in, in simple pleasantries. Hi, Kobe, how are you? They'll say, I'm fine, how are you? And they might say, thanks for asking. And so, really, there will be, always be pictures here of the, the there'll be actually live video when you do open up your, your, uh, your screen. Sometimes you will see this, and that means that their camera is off. And so by, by acknowledging them one by one, you get to see, first of all, if they're in the room, and they can hear you because that's what you want to know is you, if you can if you can hear them and also you want to be able to check their mic levels and if i click on one of these boxes you can see right here that the volume is set at 59 percent and that's pretty that's pretty good right there you don't want to go too loud because if you go too loud you might get an echo or you might get some um feedback so 59 50 to probably 60 is good and um some are are, are shot they're pre they come in and they're the way down low is because if you go any higher, you'll have this uh, tremendous feedback. We hope that the, the children will have a headset and a microphone. And the reason why is for echo. A lot of the kids will have an iPad. They run it off an iPad. We can't use an iPad. We can only use a desktop or a laptop. But they can use an iPad, um, I believe, or a phone to watch the lessons. And so a lot of times they'll just run off the speaker of the iPad and the problem with that is you'll hear the background noise of the whatever is in the room. You might hear you might hear people in the background talking Chinese. There might be yelling. There might be cars, car noise or, or street noise, whatever it is. So I always encourage, I always say, do you have one of these? Do you have a headset or earplug? You want to get them to do that because it'll, <laughs> you won't hear all that extra stuff as much. And then they can hear you much better. In this box is... Um, I mean, this has only happened maybe once or twice in my, in almost three years I've been teaching. There's a mosaic. If there's something that they're doing, if they're going like this really closely or putting their mouth up to the camera, and you're just getting so frustrated with them, you can do, turn on the mosaic. And what this does is, as you can see, it just shows a mosaic of their of their screen. They're still there, but you can actually hide them if you don't want to look at them. I've done this like twice. It's not even a big deal. I rarely use it. Um, next to that is you can mute them. So you can see that there's a little X in the in the uh, micro or the uh, speaker, and that mutes just them. If they're being uh, obnoxious or if there's lots of um, background noise that's that's distracting to the group, I would shut that off right there. Uh, and then you just click it again and it unmutes. So as you as you hover over, you can see that it's saying mute, which means it's not which means it's unmuted now. So if you click it, it's mute. And see if I hover, now it says unmute. I just click it again, and it's unmuted. Over here is, um, I don't really use this much. You can look at their past evaluation. And it's really just whatever they got in their last lesson. I don't really think it's, it's really useful for me, unless you're getting a really, really bad student. So I don't see really why there'd be a need to really use that. Up in the right-hand corner of that individual box, it says remind student. Here's an opportunity to tell them. Let's say that they're teach, they we're, we're talking in the introductory area. And you can't hear them. They're going. You can't hear. Obviously, their microphone's not working. If I press this, you'll see it. A little robot comes in, and in Chinese, it, the student is told that the teacher can't hear them, that their microphone is not working. Now that also, you see, there's three different. There's no sound, no video, and now sound or video. So you can do that. But they they don't. They only want you to use that once or twice. They don't want you to keep on hitting it over and over again. Cause that, that's very irritating because it's loud. The other thing you notice here at the bottom is we do just individual only, which I kind of talked about before. If I just want to talk to that person, I'm only talking to them. And, and if you look at the other children, there's a microphone with a red microphone circle with a slash across it. That means that their microphones are shut off. This is great for isolating. So, so let's say you're teaching a class and you and you're just you're not. Maybe they're doing it all at the same time and somebody's saying a word that just doesn't sound right. And you can isolate each one and say, can you repeat that word again? And they might say, you know, fodder to the father, or far, 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 father. And then you want to isolate them. But don't spend too much time with them. Just try to get them to at least try it a few times. 
that's when you can isolate them and you can open up their microphones to speak. This is like a two-way communication, but let's say they're, that they're all muted. So they're all muted. Instead of opening up all of their mics, I just go over here and I open up his only. So only his now is live. And then again, here is the individual diamond. And I usually give out, typically what I do is I give out two diamonds per right answer. And if they're kind of struggling, I might just give them one. Or if they're kind of obnoxious, I might just give them one. I really don't want to get too hard on them, though. Because the idea for them is, especially with the Kids brand, they really want to make education fun. And the whole idea of it is to make them, make them have a good time. You don't want to get too hard on them or be mean to them. You always want to be as nice as possible. Some kids, you'll notice, that just are withdrawn. you got to remember, these kids have been home for almost 90 days straight. They take classes every single day. They're, they're some of the hardest working children I've ever seen in my life. They're working 10 to 12 hours. They come home and they do homework and they go to bed. And that's pretty much it. And their, their lives are just structured to the max. So I always give, try to give them a little leeway, make this an oasis for them, make sure it's fun, that they're, that they're enjoying themselves. We don't want it to be more work. That's the last thing we want to do is have it to be work. We want to make, try to make it as fun as possible. And I, I catch myself doing that too because you're, if I'm doing 81 classes a week, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm burned out. I might get into class like this. I'm mean like, uh. <laughs> so I try to avoid that. The other thing you'll notice here is I don't want to spend, I can't bring my cursor over to it, but you see there's, there's five horizontal lines right below here, right below the uh, presence on each person's picture. I don't know if I have one on mine. I have one on mine in the upper right hand corner. You see, as I'm talking, that's kind of like showing the levels of my, my microphone and how well I'm talking. You can see that they're moving. They're fluctuating right now. Is If I go really loud like this, sorry, that's that means that the bars will go up really high. So you can kind of kind of judge there too if they have sound by when this the bars in each of the students' boxes are moving. Uh, that's another indication. So that's pretty much it for the for the for the child. You can also, when we're talking about the transparent box, I can bring them up on stage, which I always do. I'll say, but I always I've been lately asking for permission. Some of them don't want to be on screen, so I'll say, do you want to go up on stage and get a sticker? And they say yes, and so I click on the plus, and I select the student that I want to be in that box, and then which is which is great here. So now I can I can enlarge it with a double arrow in the right hand corner. You can see that I'm double enlarging it, and then there's a there's a few uh, real fun stickers that you can, you can apply to their faces. The kids, the younger kids, really love it. There's like Batman. You can put Batman on the on the head. You can and that that'll actually fit the head, and it will move wherever the head goes. Captain America is really popular. What else do we have? There's rabbit ears, which I use. I always have a rabbit in the class, so the kids like to use the rabbit ears. And and then, of course, Kobe and Momo. This is Kobe. Kobe Koala. You're going to love his personality. His personality is me to a T. You know, he loves to eat. He loves to sleep. And he was, he's just not the best student. And, and then there's Momo. Momo is very studious, very uh, always on time does her homework when she's supposed to. She's just night and day different from Kobe, but they're best friends. And they're in by 85% of the lower level classes. You're going to see Momo and Kobe in uh, in the lower level classes. And they love it. So then when they, what you'll notice is when they move, like if I move like this, like let's, let me show you what this means. And I put Kobe on myself and I move my head. He moves his head. And kids just love this. They'll spend the whole introductory period on this. He'll look up, he'll look down. And so it kind of tracks your head, and the, the kids really love that. So here I have the teacher, obviously, right? I can do teacher that I'm now. I can also put another student here. The most we can do right now is just two children. We only have two of those transparent boxes. At the end, it gets kind of it's a, it's a struggle because you have to try to get all four kids up on stage, and you have to just give them equal time to get up on stage and, and do different things. Most of the children know this already. They'll click on the presence, and they'll get a free diamond. So at the very bottom right, right now, you can see that Kobe has five diamonds because I was giving them diamonds. Momo has two. And some might come in with zero, and they might have come in late. And I always try to give them a, a few diamonds so that they feel like they're, they've been participating. And so this is the transparent box. To get rid of it, on the upper right-hand corner is a little closed box. And then if you hit the double arrow at the very bottom, it collapses it, which is nice because they can't get it in the way. The, t the kids don't see it, but you do. And they kind of get in the way because most of the times there's two boxes on screen and they just kind of cloud the, your image and so it's kind of hard to see. Let's go back and continue up here. I kind of got off track here. Next to the diamonds, this is an all diamond giveaway. I always do that when they work together and they're working really hard. 
I'll give them a bunch of diamonds. Next to that is a text box, which I use a lot because I can, I can tell the students that, hey, I can't hear you. I use it a lot. I use it to showcase how words are sound. I try to sound them out for them by breaking up the syllables and working on individual sounds. I use that just to communicate with them as well. And I use it for a graphic graphical purpose as well. For then I have markers, how to draw something. Right, the red will do it. The blue and the green just don't work for me. It, oh, it's working now. Maybe it's because you're watching me. And then you just you've got to close it, otherwise it's there and it kind of disrupts the class. So it's it's good to get rid of those. This is called the spotlight tool. When you're in your demo one, they're going to ask, ask you, can you show me, can you spot, can you highlight an area of the screen? All right. And you just got to go to that and click on it. The whole screen turns to a transparent, maybe a 50% opacity window. Now, if I wanted to just highlight something, I want, let's say I wanted to highlight Momo. I just click and drag and I can highlight that. Or I can click and drag over here or over here and that type of thing. I use this occasion, maybe, you know, if there's something that they just don't see on the screen and I'll highlight it, but I really don't use it that much. Next to the spotlight are the stickers. This is a, they're getting better with this. They're actually adding more and more stickers. The one that I use a lot, we have, we have Spider-Man. Kids love this and Iron Man. You know, I get creative with this. I'll put a pizza, I'll put a pizza on, 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 um, you know, he's delivering a pizza. The stickers are fun. Like, even though, I think the teachers love it. More, I wouldn't say more than them, but it's it's a lot of them are really really cool. Lately, what they've been asking for is snow, and so here you can you can fill the entire screen up with snow. It's very relaxing, I think, for them. It kind of comes in at the very end. See how it comes in right here? There's the, the you exit out there. You can turn it as well. I'm just gonna do this and make it go a different way and so it's really it's really quite relaxed you can play with this as much as you want stickers are a big portion of it because I, I don't know what it is but even the adults I notice that when I'm in WeChat with the the staff they love using stickers so I think and then Asian cultures I think the sticker is just really really valuable they, they really enjoy it and you have a whole different set of tools you have the meteor shower you can use you have uh, the wind which is really cool you can make the wind get bigger I lost it. Where is it? You can make the wind, the leaves get bigger, and I love that. Now, you, to get rid of all of the, the stickers at the same time, you just hit the hit the uh, garbage can up here, and everything goes away. Um, there's some food. There's some cars that the, kid, the boys tend to like. The cars. The girls tend to go for uh, the roses and the and the um, the rainbows. And some of them have gifs. Some of them uh, will move. As I've shown you here, there's a panda, which I love. He sits there and eats bamboo. You can make him big or small. And I think this is probably my all-time favorite. I've been doing this a lot. I have this whale. And I, and especially, especially for the older kids. The older kids, I don't want a sticker. I'm, I'm too old for that. Okay. And then I'll do this optical illusion almost. Like I'll bring in a, a couple dolphins. And I'll do one upside down. They're like, "Well, how did you do that?" <laughs> you know, they just, they just, uh, they don't, they can't figure it out. And I'll say, "Isn't that strange?" Isn't that fun? And I'll put a bunch of them all different directions, you know, and have fun with them that way. So that's the that's the stickers. Um, we use that a lot, I would say. And you just X out to get rid of that screen. So if you want to use the stickers, this gets rid of everything all clear. This X is out to remove that then you have your microphones if you you can lower the microphones it doesn't shut them off it doesn't mute them but it does decrease it by about 80 percent so you can still hear them but it's just very very low and then this is for all mics on and when you the most of the time you use this is when there's a song that's being played they'll tell you to make sure the microphones are all off because there could be some feedback and so that's when you hit that all off and none of the microphones or none of the speakers are, are, are loud. This running time, you've an ongoing clock. That one will not be 45 minutes. It'll start at five minutes and it'll count down to zero in the introductory page, which is what this is. At zero, that's when we know to start. And you'll get that up there in the right-hand corner. And you'll also see a, a running clock over here. It'll be down to 
you know, three, two, one. Okay, time for time to get going, and then we'll go in and, and start the class. And I'll show you that in a second. But I just want to call, point out a couple more things. Now, sometimes they might not be able to hear you. And so you have a volume over here that if you can't, if they can hear you, you could max out. But I'm typically always at 80. I think that's a default that comes in. There's also an echo. Sometimes you might hear yourself echoing. And if you just make sure that's off, echo off, it should always be off, basically. And then there's the sound bars. You can see if my microphone is working. Button next to, which I've never used, thank God, um, is an urgent issues a situation and this has never happened i've never witnessed anything happening yelling at them but i haven't never seen anything thankfully if you ever see a, a parent hit a child hit that button it'll immediately go to cct which is the um which is basically a tech support cct capital c capital c capital t and it'll immediately go to them i've never used it thank god and i hope i never do and then this will if you click on this one it looks like a book or a greeting card you click on that it will take us out of the classroom but we don't do that until the very end well, underneath my picture is a reference some reference material usually uh, this gives you like little tips and hints to do like this says check teacher equipment to ch check student equipment greet the students what I didn't tell you which which I, I, I the area here the reference area there's also some information in the welcome area it might give you some more information as far as what they want you to do and then at the very bottom here is a button that looks like an arrow you want if there's something that's troubling you or some one student just keeps on coming in and leaving and you just can't get them to get it to work right you can send them a a, a message and lately they've been kind of late in getting back to you so i try to figure this out myself i try to figure out the, the problems myself um, there's some tips and tricks i will teach you later on once you're hired how to do that but you would just write a simple quick message here send it to staff they'll get it and they'll reply back and it'll make this really annoying ding dong ding dong it's really annoying it's really loud so you know that when they're there they're you're you you're hear that noise you, you know that they're watching you very rarely they'll watch you during your your class but if there's a if they're if they notice something that's off they'll come in and say hey we noticed that you're not in the room what's going on and that's it for this for the demo one i'm not going to go into the lessons right now because that's you will go into the lessons we'll talk about that in another video but I didn't press that. I say hello, and then this is the way the class will look. Uh, this will be a running clock down here. And uh, you can also play with Momo if you want. I don't know what they see on their end, but this is just... Sometimes there's... Like during Easter, it was really fun last year. They, 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 had, a, um, they had a basket that you could catch the eggs. So the eggs would be flying, and you'd go around <laughs> catching the eggs. It's really, it's really, it's really silly stuff. But this, this job is silly in so many ways, and they try to make it fun for the for the teachers. I think. I think that's pretty much it as far as what you would encounter. The only other thing is, I'm just going to do this really quickly. Is that so? Let's say we start the class. You click on number one, and you see a number one. You can see right now there's two of the transparent boxes. I always decrease them immediately because they take up so much space. I'm hoping they change this and make it a default where it opens up like that. And I just press number one, and we're in our first lesson. Whatever it is, the objective is here is you just basically, like something like this, you say, oh, who's that? Is that Kobe? Look at Kobe got bigger. You know, something like that. You got to kind of see and, and judge each lesson as it occurs. But you'll develop a pattern of knowing what to do, what to say. You, I usually take like five or ten seconds and I kind of analyze what I'm looking at. This is obviously Mario Brothers, and so they do a takeoff on that. And um, and so I'll talk about that a lot. This is a very simplistic. I don't even remember what this is. What we have to do here. The objective of the class is to learn action words and learn present continuous tense. Uh, ask questions according to lesson objectives. Pre-assert students' language. There's really not much going here other than it gets larger and gets smaller. What's he wearing? Those are types of things. Is, is he smiling? Is he happy? Or is he sad? You know, what's happening? He's hitting his head on the top of those bricks. What's coming out of the top? What's coming out of that box? It's a mushroom. Why is there a mushroom? You know, you get really goofy with them, really silly. And that's pretty much what that is about. So that's 
and then each lesson is different. I'm not going to go into all of the different lessons because um, that's a different that's a different video. This is long enough as it is. So I hopefully you will. I'm going to trim this down, and hopefully you're going to get a lot out of this because I really cover a lot.